painting Warhammer fast, but to a high standard. Those two things will make your choices when it comes to being a miniature painter so much more informed. I, I, it's like it shuts out everything else and I'm just in. It always takes me way longer than I think it's going to take. That's going to be the killer here, isn't it? The sort of get out of jail free card with speed painting stuff is... Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. In this episode, we're going to be talking about speed painting models, but still achieving a high quality result. The month of June was of course, June Steeler Colts monthly painting challenge. Me and James have painted some Gene Steelers in a limited amount of time, but we wanted to achieve the highest quality result possible. So we're going to be sharing with you our tips on how we did that. And of course, we'll have our staple segments of the show, like question of the week. And of course our hobby hacks. We'll also be sharing with you some updates on our personal army projects. But first, Joe, you're alive. I am, barely. Literally, ones of people have been asking where you are. I saw a comment. A, a comment, yeah. yeah. That um, guy. And it had <laughs> one like. <laughs> Someone went, where's was Joe? Was that like you? When, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Someone was like, where's Joe? One like, no answers. Um, I'm back. Back yeah. again. Don't turn like off the, yet. Like the proverbial Slim Shady of the Warhammer industry and all the viewers have left so we'll see yeah. you next week <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry no paul this week um or ben or ben can you can you talk about where you've been vaguely yeah um i mean a load of people follow me on like both the instagram accounts anyway so a lot of people probably would have seen it but um been doing sort of all over doing like some photography stuff i do like some music photography stuff um been globe trotting really. I've been everywhere. I've been Leon, <laughs> yeah, Birmingham. He was just whinging about the airport to us. Yeah, Leon, <laughs> Leon Airport. If we've got any French listeners, Leon Airport is barely in Leon, as far as I can tell. I think you were comparing it to Stansted, London Stansted. That is, yeah, London an, Stansted. An hour and a half London away. Stansted is barely. Well, it isn't really in London. It's, it's not. It's not in London. Not, it's not and, in then, London. Uh, and there's also London South End, which is definitely not in London. <laughs> yeah. um, but Leon itself were, was lovely. Um, yeah, so everywhere, I've been everywhere. Leon, Birmingham, Manchester. I've been seeing the world. Um, <laughs> seeing the world. It's a very small world, <laughs> those three places. Yeah. Um, to the American listeners, those are probably like one state apart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like their states are bigger than England, pretty yeah. much. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's been fun, though. Nice. It's been fun. And I've also been moving flat. So it's like, I'm just laying the groundwork for what I haven't painted the Gene Steeler, but we'll yeah. get there. We'll get but to that. Getting the I've excuses been in early. I've been okay. out. We'll get to that. Been out, been busy, um, been moving. Yeah, been all, all over the place, really. So Has that been, because uh, I find when I've not been painting stuff and I've been talking about it a lot, I get more excited to paint. Mm. Whereas when I'm painting like loads and loads and loads, I don't want to say that I'm burnt out, but it's not as like yeah. the reward isn't there so much. So are you looking forward to getting back to painting has it given you like yeah, more excitement I, for I, it well i was painting this morning mm. um because i've come in on a half day at work today um just a, a peek behind the curtain for everyone <laughs> um, um so i was painting this morning it was like the first thing i did when i get back so um yeah it's exciting it's exciting it's like when you when you physically can't like because i haven't had the time i literally haven't had a moment to carve out when you can't, it then it gets you, it gets you in the mood yeah. too. If that makes sense, I think that's that's what I would advise to everyone. If you are, we talk about getting stuck in a rut a lot. I think if you get a social life, <laughs> get out there. Um, yeah, if you if you're actually unable to, there's nothing like it to get you motivated to. Do you know? Yeah, because I mean? it's it's one thing when you're at home and you've like not got the time, but to like be like literally away from it. It's like even if I had the time right now, I couldn't. That's the key yeah. difference. Is like yeah, if I'm at home and I could do this, or I, I could paint, or I could watch TV, or I could do this, and there's all these things I want to do. Oh, maybe I won't paint. I'll go and do this thing. But when you when it's like literally you can't paint that's when it sort of builds it back up for you, doesn't it? So yeah, I'm excited. Similarly, James, you was talking about how without getting to what you've painted just yet, you had a similar thing where you painted all weekend. Yeah, I did. Yeah. A I, binge. Yeah. I, I, it was like the model was magnetized to me. I just couldn't. He was sending yeah. me whips and it like a couple of hours would go past. And, like the progress was like mad. Yeah. yeah. I, was, I was like, oh, we're still going. <laughs> I, yeah. I was, I was, yeah, smashing it like the Hulk on steroids. It was like, it was, it was pretty good. I was, yeah, I, I literally had a blast. I, in, I did not stop painting. Did um, you find like a similar thing where you haven't been able to paint much lately? Yeah, so I, it was yeah. like a nicer 
feeling coming back to it yeah like more I, motivation I, I i i just yeah i hadn't painted in quite a while just because of how busy we've been with various other things um and then yeah i got free weekend because i taught class previous weekend to that and then i was busy the previous weekend to that so yeah i think i've done a bad moon class and, a, and an element class pretty much back to back so i haven't had much time like weekend wise to paint so then this weekend it was like complete complete free so i was like right this is it i'm doing it it's interesting as well because like the time that you've that time that you've just explained where you've been busy mm. some of that is obviously in the realm of painting because you're teaching classes yeah 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 so it's like you're surrounded it's, it's, by it it's interesting that you're still surrounded by it and you when you got home you I weren't like it. sick of the idea of it you I were like it. i know oh, now i need to paint something that i actually like yeah but i think yeah. that makes it better because it, if you went like say you went on holiday and you had like a complete detox and you're away from all the paint and stuff it kind of like slips your mind you go into a mm. different mindset but when you're like for example when we're here talking about painting miniatures all day and you know doing all media stuff here and then like when james is teaching class whatever, because you're around it but you're not doing the painting so yeah. it's just like all the ideas are turning and you're like, your excitement is there. Yeah. But you can't satisfy it, it. It's like a flip of a coin for me on like what what reaction I'm going to have. Am I going to be like, am I going to get home and be like, I'm sick of it. I don't want to think about it anymore. Or am I going to be like, I've been dying to paint. Do you know I, what I mean? It's like a flip of a coin. I have that problem because I I, I, I'll teach class and it's almost like a little bit of practice because you get time on the brush a little bit to show each of the sections or each of the steps, etc. But it's not what you want to be painting, is it? So no, it's, like, it's not. Yes and no, I guess. Like it's good to recap and practice and go over techniques and bits and bobs again. It's always good to get a, you know, get a bit of a rep in and get some practice in. But, but at the same time, um, the worst bit is that all the students get to do the full thing to through to fruition in the time section and you get to show a little bit and do a little bit of it and then break away, et cetera. So you don't, it's like you are getting to do it, but, but you're not, if that makes sense. Yeah. So you're like, in like yeah, instructor yeah, mode, yeah, not in. Yeah. You know, yeah. And you watch mode. everybody having fun doing it and you're like, yeah, I want to do that as well, but I can't. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, like it's yeah, a bit like that, but, but yeah. Yeah. I've been feeling, um, my, my thing is a little bit different because I paint a lot. I paint near enough every day but it's normally not the stuff I want to be painting. It's either, well, I say not want to be painting, but it's not like my personal stuff, which is why the Blood Angels have been fun. But it will either be like a commission or like we're doing this painting challenge or we need this thing for a video. So it's like stuff I like and enjoy usually, but it's not like the exact thing I want to be doing. Mm. And then now that's why I found the Blood Angels like so enjoyable because it was like, ah, oh, I get to put these in my cupboard at the end of it. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. don't disappear. Because normally I get yeah. like, that's the saddest part about doing commissions and other stuff for other projects is, you spend so much time with the model, but like minutes with it actually finished, if you get what I mean. Like yeah. it's like this, because you're always, you're always on the time crunch. So it's like the second it's done, okay, get the varnish on, get it in the box, go. Mm. And then you don't actually really get to live any satisfaction. The only, th the only thing I really have of them is like the photos at the end of it. Yeah. You get to like look back at them. It's not really the same, is it? Like, like I always say, it's a moment captured in time. That's what it is. So, but yeah, no, um, I agree with you totally. It's good to get some free time. But, I, but I, I'll, I'll talk about it when we talk about the, the, the gene stealer stuff but has anyone done any non-gene stealer hobby stuff i have started the subsequent model for my blood angels which is going to be uh the reward for doing what's some the, batch what's painting the, sorry what is the current tally the blood angel tally? six five six five. models it's, five. it's technically five uh in the sense of they're the ones i'm going to use but i have painted six because i did a very nice test model at the start Okay, so he's switched now because originally the, the test model didn't count. Yeah. Now he's switching it up. Yeah. Now he's trying to add that on. Yeah, he's trying to pump those numbers up. Yeah, he's <laughs> trying to pump those yeah. numbers. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I've got a, a captain bit open on the screen. I've got a captain uh, built and primed. He's ready to go. And off the back of this June, June, yeah, Gene, Gene Steeler, June Steeler. I give all this. The monthly challenge oh, is the it's, tongue twisters. Yeah. Like, it's like they imprint themselves. Well, on as you said, it's July now. It's, it's Jalegion now. Exactly. So, you're, you're, so I'm ready you're to go. To next. Yeah. Literally, probably tonight, I'm actually going to start that model, I think. Oh, yeah. uh, so I'm very excited for that. But what I think I might have to do, annoyingly, is I might have to build some other models because I've worked out how I'm going to get around my. Uh, I spoke about it last week. I. I have got a custom mix for my base color. And as, as is often with the case when airbrushing, the opacity amount can vary a little bit. And I don't want to get the color to be inconsistent across the army. And this captain, I primed at the same time as my stern guard. So I'm going to use him as like my color reference before I start painting him. So I think I might have to quickly build like a, uh, a donor model that I'm then going to spray 
to be, make sure it's like a one-to-one match with that captain. And then I'm never going to paint him. He's just going to live as my like paint reference mm-hmm. yeah. for color. It's a great little tip, that. Yeah. Early hat. Early, early there you hat. go. Yeah. So I think I'm just going to have you like know- a sacrificial model that's just going to never get painted, mm-hmm. but will just be an example of like what the base color you know, should look like post airbrushing. Making up a big mix, like one of James's ketchup, ketchup bottles. bottles or anything. You should do. I probably, I probably should have done, but yeah. uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Save you so much yeah, time. Yeah, that would have been easier, but uh, well, you know. <laughs> I, do you know what it is? This, the, the, I don't think I trusted that I was actually going to get this project going well enough to bother. Yeah. So I was like, well, it's only the first five models. We'll see if I actually commit to you this. You have a perfect opportunity now. Now to, would be the time. To, now, to make, now it, would be the time. make it and the donor model so that you know that your yeah. donor model matches the big ketchup bottle. I will say though, got. even if it, I will probably do that big mix like you've advocated for before, but I do think having the test model would help because I don't know if you've ever found this. If you're airbrushing paint on a model, it might look fully red, but you give it like another four coats and the color saturates more. Like the coverage amount and the opacity amount aren't necessarily tied to the saturation because you you can have what is clearly like fully covered, nice coverage, full opacity. But and you chuck a few more layers on and it gets more saturated. So yeah. I think having that as a reference would help even if I had a pre-mix because mm-hmm. it's not necessarily given that it's going to be exactly the same. Depends how much you bothered about it, I suppose, really, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I would I would definitely do that. And I think that the idea of the model that you just spray spray in main armor color at uh, the final brightest point is, is a great yeah. idea. I suppose technically it doesn't have to be a model. It could just be like a bit of plastic art, like spray. a base or something. Um I I mean yeah a bit of plastic. You're not gonna see the volume so the problem no, is exactly. the shallow, the way say, the shadows yeah. fall I, on it. I would do a, I would do a, a sacrificial sacrificial uh, primaris. Yeah. So, I'm yeah. sure I'm sure I've got a space marine kicking yeah. around. I'm sure I can yeah. find one somewhere. Yeah. Okay, should we do the listeners' comments? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tony Onsworth says, and uh, this is in regards to Ben last week, uh, gave a little bit of a hack for when he's doing a test model, he will time with like a timer how long each painting stage takes so that he can plan for the project. Okay, I've got 40 brown belts to paint. I know that they take 11 minutes each and you can like add it up. And uh, we spoke about how he hadn't done that for... Uh, building specifically and we spoke a little bit about how long building models takes especially these days of how many parts everything is uh, so tony onsworth says fascinating discussion on timing and how long is spent painting each stage as this is something i've been thinking about a lot lately i was surprised to hear that none of you had ever timed how long building and cleaning the models takes probably because it makes for frightening reading <laughs> Yeah, I think building does take, I, I think, surprise now how much building actually takes. It always work. takes me way yeah. longer than I think it's going to take. Yeah. Like way longer. Yeah. I, I think we were talking about this because I, I was saying how the old like tactical Marines, yes, they had more parts and were factually more poseable, but I think they are quicker to build than like the new Primaris because the new Primaris they're all different to so, each other. Well, they're all different to each other, but certain torsos have to go together. Like with the old ones, I literally, I as a, as they're a, like universal parts, right? Weren't they? Everyone, yeah. everyone yeah, basically yeah, the same thing. It was yeah. like bases out the box, legs on the bases, front and back torso together. I had legs with torsos, and then it, it, you could you could blitz through them a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, Whereas now it's like, where is piece seventy three on one of these? Nice yeah, screws? yeah, and then like the arms here, the bodies here, yeah. the legs. Like, yeah, it's just like you know. Um, yeah, I think building and cleaning is surprising how long it actually takes compared to the process. I mean, getting an undercoat on, getting a base coat on, like those stages are really quick if you're using an airbrush or a spray can or something. So, um, yeah, the building and cleaning. But then ultimately, I think the better the build and clean is, the better the model turns out. So mm. like, I think it's, it, worth... it's specifically the cleaning for me that takes longer. Like the actual finding this part, cut it out, whatever. And I think that's also why everyone has such a disproportionate answer for how quick building a model is because everyone's cleaning standard is different are you i like over clean <laughs> and still still get it wrong yeah like still like so i'll just be staring at a model that hasn't got any paint on it for ages i'll spend a whole session like cleaning my model you know what i mean like a uh, question for each of you then are you a clip the part off clean it then glue it on mm-hmm. or do you put all the model together and then clean stuff or do you do a bit of both or... yeah I'll, I'll clip it i like to so i like to build as i go i don't clip all the models out put them i know some people clip all the models out i feel like you might do this no okay um clip all the models out put them okay that's that model there 
clip all the models out, the uh, the parts out, put that together. That's that model. I don't do that. I just build. I clip them out as I go and build as I go. But I clean the part before I put it on. Yeah. Um, My thing is usually I like to get the sort of torso and leg bit done and stuck to the base, and then that's kind of like this little mannequin that can sit there. And then I'll subsequently build and clean each part, and then it's like a little reward you get to stick it on. Mm. Yeah. That's how do you know I, what how I specifically it. on Marines? Do you know what does me in all the time? <laughs> all the time is when you've got to put the arms on a gun and then put the arms yeah. on the on a body. Yeah. I must get that rock like even when they're like fully little like slotted points where it can only all go in one way. For whatever reason, <laughs> it never lines what up. Is it, me. What, what like is the it? What is it? Not- like there's always a gap in where the if 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 like one arm is flush, the other arm's got a gap. Would you, you like a hobby I mean? hack for this? Like, oh god. I suppose, yeah. Go <laughs> I suppose. That's the spirit. <laughs> yeah. Uh what I would do. So you've got you've got your marine. The torso is ready. His waiting arms. Yes, yeah, so yeah. he's got he's got legs. He's got heads. He's got yeah. Because we don't do sub assemblies. Yeah, obviously in my house. So what, what I will do is I'll take my no, flat. Normally the uh, you've got the bolter weapon and then like one extra arm you've got to stick on the other side, right? Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll put plastic cement in that, mm-hmm. but I'll stick the other arm to the model first with super glue okay. so that I can. Because I'm someone who likes to sub-assemble the, the arms and the weapon. Yeah. But to get them to correctly line up, what I'll do is I'll very, very lightly super glue one arm to the body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plastic glue the wrist the, the, the wrist to the or, hand. Or the hand or yeah. whatever. Yeah, Hold yeah. it in place. Let so it it's try. like on the model, I know it lines up. Once that plastic glue is cured, I can then snap, snap off, off the super glue. Yeah. And then you're ready to go. And then you're then ready you to go. Two, oh, I like two it. Two sub-assemblies. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Yeah. That's great. It's perfect. And also, you can leave them on for the building and priming stage, and it's not until later that I'll snap those arms off, the temporary sub-assembly, if you will. TSA. Yeah. Because TSA. What, you've, I've got that super glued on. I know it's a weak joint, but I can leave it together to finish building the model, know how it's going to look. I can prime it all with one piece. Mm. I can get the airbrushing on all with one piece. I haven't got any sub-assemblies I've got like separately spray. And then once I'm actually into the painting and when I'm ready to actually have that separate and get access, snap it off. Nice. I'll give it a go. I'll that, give it a go on the Dark Angels that have begun. Ah, yeah. Very ominous. Mm-hmm. Dare, dare I ask how they're going? Um, they're going. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are. They're, they're, they've started. They've started. Um, that's, that's very cryptic, that's isn't it? Yeah, it's very, cryptic. Cryptic. Yeah, it's very oh, Well, oh, I've done oh. an update on Instagram, which is just... He's it, plugging his Instagram a lot, the, isn't he? Well, I haven't said what it is. I'm uh, just saying Instagram. You just got to know. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't class it as a plug if I just say the word <laughs> Instagram. Um, uh, yeah. So everyone's seen it. There's the picture. That's the. Uh, that's where they're at. They are that. That's the official beginning. And I did work out, by the way. Just seeing as we're on to this now. Um, <laughs> I did calculate. Because I noticed, obviously, a couple of the episodes while I was gone and everything. I know we're in listeners' comments, and we probably should have done this at the start, but um, there was a lot of sort of trash talk and stuff about, <laughs> like, me not, you know, me. Everyone, I think you was a little bit jealous that everyone had voted for me, even though you were further along at the minute. Which at I know the minute, were, still further along. Yeah, yeah, Still the only one who's actually well, at the minute. Squad. At the minute does tend to mean now. Yeah. That's what I mean by at the uh-huh. minute. Um, so... The the problem with that is, is that I worked out how much of a head start you've had. Do you know how much of a head start you've had from you starting? <laughs> I don't think I want to know. <laughs> right? From you starting until you decided to make it a competition. Actually, I think, no, I, I oh, think I know where you're going with this. And I think <laughs> you're wrong because this all started with the Mordian situation, if mm-hmm. I recall. Yeah. And that was on the same time frame as James. Yeah, yeah. You're, oh, yeah. You're, you're, both a, you're a late entry into this contest. Yeah, I yeah, agree. Yeah. You're both in. Well, no, your contest ran its course and neither of you completed it, which was that it had to no, be no, finished no, no, by no. last month. No, James bet that he was going to finish his army by June. And I said, that's never going to happen. And I said, mine definitely ain't going to be done by then. James, for some reason, set this obstacle. Oh, look, you should always check the small print because I actually meant June 20, 25. 25. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, you can make, I don't really care about your little back and forth. What I'm getting at is you, you've put me in the, the poll and the people have faith in me. Yeah. Um, do you know how much of a head start you have had between me starting my one and you starting your one, and this is your five model heads, uh, your five model like I 
Bump. I'd probably bet it was before Christmas. Well, I, I, I'm i not going back as far as that, I don't okay. think, because... Because I think I had the ideas for it then. I don't think I started until this year. I just went on your Instagram and looked at what the first uh, Blood yeah, Angel yeah, model... Instagram stalk. That's yeah, what had. I had an Instagram. Mm. I took a leaf out of Dave's book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I went back and I clocked it at 29 weeks. Which I don't know if that is. It's quite precise, that. That yeah. is quite precise. 20, well, that's what Instagram says. <laughs> um, um, so it just says 29 weeks. It doesn't say a date, so I don't know. But all I'm getting at is for someone, who's, for someone who has a five model lead after a 29 week head start, you, you're talking a, lot of, talking a lot of trash. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And I also just want to um, thank the listeners for their um you know their support and their uh you know what their their confidence in me that i'm gonna finish my army first my favorite reason is that, <laughs> that someone gave was that because my standards are lower <laughs> <laughs> because my standards are lower i have more of a chance of of finishing it which i absolutely agree with i think that is going to be that's going to be the killer here isn't it? I could I could quite happily finish it in a weekend if I want. It looked like rubbish. I just go, <laughs> it's finished. Whereas you two, you can't physically do that. Yeah, it's a bit of a character flaw of mine because yeah, I yeah. actually set my standard lower before I started any models, got halfway through my squad and went, nah, I'm not happy with that. Exactly. I'm just going to carry on painting them until I exactly. find them so acceptable. I'm happy to just sit here. Um, I'm just going to chill. <laughs> um, I'll let you get through another five models by next year. And then... <laughs> One weekend, maybe I'll smash the army out and I'll win. That's my, that's my plan. He, he's doing the submarine, but it's a really deep dive. Like, <laughs> literally, like yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my other, the opposite uh, thing that I had heard um, that came up in conversation was that um, again, going back to the the conversation that we had earlier about June and everything. Um, the reason that I won't win is because I'm too busy with non painting stuff. Mm. So I have, I have two sides to this coin. It could either go the right way or the wrong way. Um, but I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm, I'm going to have an army before all of you, both of you. If you enjoy listening to these podcast episodes every single week, I'd like to ask that you could please do us one small, tiny favor in return and hit that subscribe button on YouTube or the follow button on your podcast app. It takes only two seconds and it really, really helps us out. And it allows us to bring you these episodes for free every single week. Thank you so much. Back to the episode. Okay, anyway, back on topic. Uh, Hugo says, I've been on James's side all the way from episode one. Massive ramen bowls of water pot? Sure. Power tools to drill gun barrels? All is forgiven. But buying five pots of the same paint in one go is unhinged, straight to jail. Did you hear this? Did you see the clip of this? Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's the craziest thing that he's done. Here's why I think it's crazy, right? I'll extrapolate this. So just just to, for anyone who didn't catch it, James said on a previous episode of the podcast that when he's doing an army, he'll buy, to quote him, five or six pots of the same paint just on the off chance that a shade is slightly different when he buys a bottle in three months, which I can understand to an extent. My issue is, one, your example was flesh tones and how you wanted to use the same skin shade on 60 the one, people the one thing that can change the one thing that could change person. let's shelve that here's my second issue with it let's say you had an army right what might you use like 20 30 paints what you're gonna yeah. have 300 paints or something Dep like, depends oh, depends, well, so, depends how big how big the army is and, and okay admittedly the skin tones example i've had it before with blues i've had it before with reds i've had it before with greens where you you bought a paint. i think i'm i'm on board if it's let's say the majority color that's fair yeah. Or, and then maybe maybe the three most, the three top majority colors on the army. Yeah. And um, I get it. They change the formula that. sometimes. You might be worried about it. That's fair. But that is a real thing. It did seem yeah. a bit that, excessive. That, that, that is a real thing. Like we've it, had it, it before where we've gone to match and it's like, I think a while ago, um, Balthazar you, Gold was a big correct, one. Yeah. yeah. Where like that Balthazar changed. Gold just looked completely different. Yeah. It was yeah. like, okay. All, I'll, all I'll say is proceed yeah. with caution because this is the man whose room you cannot painting room you cannot get in because of the piles and hordes of paints. There's chest of drawers just full of paint. There is a yeah. there is a drawer full of paint. No, there's not one. There's a chest of no, chest I said of there, drawers. There's a drawer, but there's also <laughs> other areas that have paint them as well. Um, 
Yeah, I, I agree. Like, majority color. And don't get me wrong. Like, it's not like I'm running in shops and like clearing the shelf. I like a rack has probably got about ten. So you're leaving. I'm four. sorry. You're I'm just imagining some like, like kid <laughs> who's looking to like buy a little pot of a bad of black, and James is like, move, yeah. and he just gets the whole rack. Like jingle all the way. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. Like, yeah. Literally, so James trying yeah. to buy the last nine five zero. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's already been happening. So yeah, I feel like in a way, Joe, we're responsible for manifesting this because we joked, we pranked him. But yeah, then it was actually tried true. to, tried to. Yeah, so we discussed. No, it worked. You, you <laughs> like, you like, you for, for a split second, I was like, "Holy crap, are they being serious?" I was like, "Well, it turns out accidentally we was." We yeah, were, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we we joked that Vallejo, because James is famed for loving Vallejo's nine five zero black, and we joked, me and Joe joked that when they was doing their little rebrand of their labels that they changed the formula, it was like, how funny would that be? Um, backfired a little because we got, a, we got a sample pot. We, we had a little practice with it. And uh, yeah, it turns out it's different. Yeah, it is, actually is different. <laughs> yeah. The, so that I have, was the funniest thing though, was because like, I think that's the, the best, like, I, I'm not much of a prankster myself, but that's probably the best like executed prank that I've ever done. Because we just dropped it into conversation that James wasn't even participating in, but he was next to us. Yeah. And I stopped and my conversation. He literally <laughs> was just like, what? <laughs> like, straight away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I have bought six pots of the old one. So yeah, I, but you yeah, have. I have. But you yeah. Have. yeah. yeah. Uh, Captain Eshra says, do you find that as well-known professional painters that also is a part of a professional painting company, you're doubling down on the pressure with regards to social media and that you're having to keep up with everyone else. There's not only the validation, but also the pressure of achieving that like count. Uh, it's a mental health minefield. Yeah. We spoke about this on the other episode, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. I've, I, 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 yeah, it, there is, I, I say, you know, the, the pressure is only there if you let it get to you. I think if you feel, like we spoke about it, if you let, if you let the feeling of your painting for, your followership rather than your painting for you take over. I think that's where the danger is. Mm. I think if you, if you start, cause I've had it where I've, where I, I posted a picture of that Astaraf that, that Simon made me in the school swap that we've done. And I must've had about 15 messages from people going, are you going to paint that Astaraf? I'm like, I, I, I will, I will paint it. I just, there's, I, a, there's a few more in, in front, in front of it in the queue. And, and you, you feel like you're a, can't almost like committed to 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 doing it if that makes sense and like yeah. obviously I'm going to paint it of course but but at the same time um yeah it kind of makes it, you like worried about posting stuff yeah it's yeah. like yeah like, like I get messages asking has James painted X yet? <laughs> yeah. that's a legit that like serious yeah <laughs> really yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry yeah. I get messages being like. Ask James when he's going to finish like this, whatever. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah. I mean, half joking, I imagine, and probably because it's something that we spoke about on the podcast. But yeah, it's funny that. Like, do you get Do you get from other stuff? I feel like people use us as like the vessel for their messages to James because they you know can't get a hold of him. They're like, I oh, know, I'll go tell. Like, I've um, not to be accused of plugging my Instagram again, but because I've got the the least amount of followers out of all of us. I think I'm the most accessible one. <laughs> so I just get messages that like they want to filter through to you too, I feel like. Um, yeah, so I get like, when's James going to, you know, finish this? Oh, but whatever. they'll be like, oh, found that this was funny. Send it to James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. No, you I mean, can, you can just message me directly. I, I, like, I, I've got, like I said, that you, I'm not, that busy that I can't reply to messages like that. So yeah, just drop yeah. me a message. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. No, I mean, obviously I appreciate it. It's funny. Yeah. Fun to talk to the, the listeners and stuff. But yeah, it's funny when I get, I don't, I think people just know that I'm probably not going to have painted X, Y, and Z that I said I was going to paint. So they don't even bother asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I mean, but back, back on the, the specific thing, but I do, I do hundred percent agree. Like I think that if you let, if you let the social media account that you've got, if you let that kind of, if you let that kind of take over and you, and, and really gives you that emotion that you're painting for those people rather than painting for yourself, I think that's where the, the, the minefield then suddenly presents itself. I think that's what I, I said in that other episode we spoke about. I, I just, I think I flipped it and I was like, it's the same thing with the, with the Night Lord Terminator. I'm just like pl plugging away through it, getting it done. But I don't want to feel obliged to have to update people on it because I just want to get it done. And, and I feel if it puts untoward pressure on hitting it in a certain time frame or updating people, which I just don't think will translate very well to the model being finished as well as I'd like it to, because you feel that you've got to get it updated or feel that you've got to 
finish it so that you can present it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I love the idea of um, Simon listening to this and going, well, no, you are obliged to finish it. <laughs> I, 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 no, I, am, I, am, I, am, I am finishing it. It is close to being done now, which is good. But like, but at the same time, because I know how special it is for him, I just, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to just go full beans like speed wise and then just, you know, not get it done. Do you know what? Change it for me a little bit. I didn't actually speak of this at the time, but um, one thing I, remember being as a bit of a turning point when I realized that like, I can't really keep doing this. I sort of had that thought in the back of my mind. And it was when I, usually my rule was kind of like, if I painted something, I had to post it, like just everything. It was just this like catalog. And I've started letting stuff go now. It's like everything that you paint, you don't have to post. Mm. And one, there was a few things that I'd painted at the time that I was quite fairly happy with. It wasn't, I was like, I didn't want to share them, but I was like, I realized the only reason I wanted to share them was just to get some likes and stuff. And I was like, ah, that's not a good idea. So I just didn't post it. And like, I've still got the photos and stuff, but I'm just, I'm just not going to post it. And once I've made that little mindset switch of like, I'm just going to post the stuff I actually like want to share. Cause mm -hmm. I want to share. So I have something to say about it or there's like a purpose for it. Or like I said, I like to do my little, um, like captions underneath now. It's like a little personal reference for a future date, but having what you were saying about like how, um, for example, if you had painted that Astorath, and then you didn't post it, those people still wouldn't have known yeah, you hadn't no, done it, totally. if you get what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. That also, um, if you are getting wrapped up in stuff like that, you can turn like the like counter off. Mm. And yeah. Stuff like that. Which I'm seeing more and more people do now. And I feel like it's a way of almost like reclaiming that it's I'm posting things just because I want to post these things. Not I'm not trying to get loads of likes. I'm not yeah. trying to get loads of interaction. It's just a it, it makes it feel a bit more like what a social media was supposed to be in the first place, which is like your personal page almost. Yeah. yeah. Just, you know, what, you know, what else as well is just, just spend less time on it because the more you're scrolling and looking at other people's stuff, the more left out you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're just not, I mean, I know it's easier said than done. We all like scrolling through, but if you just limit your time on the app, but I don't use Instagram a lot, like personally, mm -hmm. um, in part because I'm like running accounts all day for work. So it's a bit different, but like in my personal time, I very actively try not to really scroll through it at all. And then I kind of only really open the app when I want to post stuff because I've got, you know, something to share. Mm. Yeah. But um, I think that probably helps because you're not like just inundating yourself with like seeing all this stuff that's going on, th feeling left out because mm. um, you're not, you, you know, if you don't know it's going on. Ignorance is bliss to, yeah, to a yeah, degree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Final one here is from uh, Jack Hammer. This, mo this made me laugh. Uh, so in a completely original and unique way, I found myself coming back to Warhammer in my 30s after a hiatus in my adolescence. Uh, and I have to say, I've been really surprised by some of the attitudes in the community surrounding things like the pile of shame, motivation to paint, and the desire for all of us to compare what we do with other hobbyists. Uh, I think it's really important that we all take a step back from what we're doing and remind ourselves that this is a hobby, something to do for fun. Uh, the world is not depending on us to complete the next miniature. You don't have to stay motivated if you're not feeling it. Don't paint. Do something else. It's so bizarre to me to hear so many people re repeat these frankly toxic ideas about the shame and pressure of what is supposed to be a space of retreat from reality. Just enjoy it. I, I do agree. I do agree quite quite massively on that. But I think like, you can always say people say great shame and then they say like part of opportunity or potential or stuff like that. I think there's like flipping it around the other part way. Part of which... potential just, part of potential even sounds better. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's a just, branding issue just, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like <laughs> it's even, that's, that is even, let's just go with that from now on. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I, the other thing I would say is that it, the industry has changed quite a bit in the last five years or so. Like I'd probably say that like, yeah, when t 10, 15 years ago, it was, way more of just a hobby for a lot of people but i think in the last five maybe even a bit longer than that. i mean obviously we've been around over a decade but but in the last five it's really ramped up with how it's more of an industry and more commercialized now and there's more companies and business and individuals so, running channels and all this kind of well, stuff that's something so, i want to be aware so, of as well it's like i was going to say because there's it in part it might be because there's more people taking it seriously now yeah, but when yeah. you've got people like like even us for an example like we do this professionally yeah so like we've got obviously a different sort of standard to maintain um, whereas people on the other side of the fence don't have that, but then you're sort of comparing yourself to those people because they're the mm. banner bearers on social media and on YouTube and whatnot. It so. is, yeah, it is very much so. But the thing is, like we always say, like do, do it your way, and like there's, you know, you don't have to. It doesn't have to be approached that way. Just because you've got loads of models in the attic or in, in, in you know, in a, in a cupboard or drawers and drawers and drawers and drawers of paint, it's like it's it's like it. 
you don't have to look at it in that negative context. It doesn't mean you're not achieving stuff or you're enjoying stuff or you've not got the right motivation or mindset. Like, you know, yeah, I've got lots of models and stuff like that that I haven't built, but it doesn't, I don't see it as a weight or a burden. It just Actually, it's really exciting for me because when I do get a gap in schedule or I do get something, I can just look in that drawer or cupboard or loft or wherever it is and just go, right, cool, what do I want to do? Like, I don't, you know, yeah. I think, I don't know why, I don't know, I don't actually know where like pile of shame actually came from. I don't know actually know where that terminology came from, but, but I don't really see it. It's been it. around since I can remember. Yeah, yeah. Like gray shame, pile of shame, plastic crack, all that kind of stuff. Like I don't, I don't really, I don't really, yeah, I don't really see it as a negative personally. I think if you, if you think of it in that way, I think it becomes more of a mental burden. Like it becomes I do think it's how like, you think about it. I've yeah. said many times, there's loads of people that like, some people just like collecting stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah we said, it's not necessarily yeah. a pile of shame. It's like, well, that's the stuff that's I like the to collection. collect. It's there yeah. in the box on the shelf. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. If you're a long-term listener of the podcast, you'll know how important it is to have the right tools to aid you in your painting. And if there's one piece of equipment that I could never live without, it's my Onyx lamp from Native Lighting. It doesn't matter what brush or paints you have if you can't see what you're doing in the first place. The Onyx is the perfect lamp for miniature painting because it's super bright, 2200 lumen LEDs cast soft and diffused light on your models without any harsh shadows. And its daylight balanced color temperature of 6500K gives you the confidence that the colors you are painting are accurate. As someone with a very small hobby desk, by far my favorite feature though is its articulating arm, which clamps to the side of your desk, maximizing your workspace. It's also super adjustable so you can sit comfortably in the perfect painting position without sacrifice. It also folds up into a compact shape, which is great if you like to travel to paint with your friends. To upgrade your setup and order yours now, head to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop or head to the link in this episode's description. Okay, topic for this week, painting Warhammer fast, but to a high standard. Now, we have monthly challenges here on Paint Perspective. Uh, where we sort of challenge the community and ourselves typically to paint uh, a different faction or we have like a different random challenge. And the idea is really just to get everyone painting something new and fresh every month. Um, and that's why we have the stipulation that you don't have to paint a whole model. It can just be like, I've done a bit of one, got some of it done, or I did a little helmet to put on a base. Or maybe you did do a whole model. Maybe you've done a, you know, full beans, massive demon, or maybe you've just done a tiny little character or basing friend or whatnot. Uh, so this month was hashtag June Steeler Cults for the month of June. Uh, and we'll be going through all of the community submissions at the end of this topic. Um, but me and James approached this in particular in a similar kind of way where we was, I don't want to say speed painting, but painting with haste, I guess <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll brand it as, which is to say that- That's going to catch on. Haste painting. Yeah. <laughs> which is to say that we weren't like blitzing through models in like an hour each but we only had a very limited amount of time to spend on the models. Literally that two days ago. So. <laughs> yeah. I just want to chip in as well. Is that you seem to be hammering home this thing that I've done nothing. Which well, we, I was true. getting to that. <laughs> uh, the erasure of me contributing anything to this just because I don't have a finished model. Go, go on, Joe. What from, have you brought to the table? From a man who has repeatedly painted half a model or just the front of a model so that you say repeatedly i did that one time prove it <laughs> <laughs> i'm staying out of this exactly yeah. okay. um so i have done something i didn't rush around and paint for like two or three hours before i flew to leon just squeezing the last little bit of free time i had out of that and then paint this morning to come in and get told I've done nothing. Um, so there will be something up. There will be something up. And I, and I, and I committed to it being a full model because this whole thing was my idea that we had to do a full okay. model. Well, going so I didn't just do a head or okay. anything like that. Well, That's this is it. all hearsay because going into this conversation, I've seen no evidence of anything being painted. Neither has James. He brought nothing to the table. So voila. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Well, anyway, so I thought we would unpack how we approached painting these models with a limited amount of time, but still mm. wanted to achieve a high quality. Mm. Just, just That's the, exactly just, what I was just, thinking. Did you see the struggle there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was painful, wasn't it? It was, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, Jay, well, we did all paint yeah, models in a limited time. It was very limited. Okay. Well, James, you said you was going to start this model beginning of the month, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. And then you went, nah, probably not going to happen. Then you went, oh no, it's definitely going to happen. 
And then you built the model. You had some problems with it. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Okay. Yeah. Go on then. What what happened? Well, see, I was I I I thought I'd be tactically clever, and I thought I could get off the little basin buddy off of the abominance base. Won't happen him. That hand. He's 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 hugging that guy for dear life. Um, what was the? Because originally it was Kellermore. It was the Kellermorph, so yeah. When, when did the switch happen? Why? How uh, like because I wanted, because the Kellermorph, I no, wanted... No, because he realised he thought he could do the little fella that comes with it and not yeah. have to do a whole, well, it was a, a whole it, big model. It That's was what a, happened. Oh, it was a two-way two thing. I thought the Kellermorph had been started and no, it was a case no. of like, oh, I'll just finish it. It was a two, kind of two-sided thing. It was like, Kellermorph's already on a plinth. I really want to do it as a, just a, a, a really spend a lot of time on it because I love the model and I want to do it to a really, really high standard. Um... Then I saw that he had a little friend and I was like, oh, that's amazing. I can do that. And that'd be a great little win. Um, then Open I, the sprue. Then I, <laughs> then I, then I got it out. The, then I got it out the, out the blister and I was like, oh, the claw is literally molded to his leg and there's no way I can get that off and make it look clean. I did look for other gene stealer hands, but he has a tiny hand. So anyway, long story short, I took the model up with me to Element for the class I was teaching a week ago. Um, I went up early on the Friday because I had some things up in Manchester to do. And I thought, I'll be efficient with my time. I've got all my sprays and everything out from the class. I'll get it undercoated. It was absolutely steaming hot in Element and went to undercoat it. And I think maybe the heat had affected the can because when I sprayed it, it came out like black talcum powder and the model looked rougher than the surface of the moon. So... <laughs> I didn't Classic get, James I didn't get, I didn't get the, the Very heads. relatable. Cause we all know we've all been to the moon. Yeah. yeah. We all know. Yeah. yeah. You're not yeah. seeing the NASA photos. Come on. <laughs> um, uh, so, um, so anyway, so then I was left with a fully built clean model that I couldn't paint on top of and I didn't have anything to strip the model with. So I was like, right. So that I, I literally had nothing to do in, in the hotel, obviously, uh, on that Saturday night. So I took a class on Sunday, came back home, have had a busy week. And then this weekend freed up uh, and I literally- I feel like, Sorry, I feel like you was talking about stripping that model for like two weeks. Like you come in the office and you'd be like, oh yeah, I need to strip that model. I'm going to do that tonight. And then like three <laughs> days ago, but I'm like, how are you getting on with the model? He's like, oh yeah, I need to strip that. Yeah. Well, there was, there was about, there was a couple of other things that were to do with like jobs and stuff that yeah. I wanted to do that. I, it was like, yeah, I'll do that this weekend and then it would get to Monday. Yeah. I, no, not this weekend. I, I had, a, <laughs> I had a lot going on, all right? There was a lot of things to, that I had to get done. But um, but yeah, so I eventually got got it stripped, which was which was good because um, the surface was horrendous. Um, and then, yeah, this weekend's just gone, freed up. So I started the model at two o'clock on the Saturday and I finished it at 10 on Sunday night. So I was, I was, I couldn't put it down. Literally, I was enjoying it that much. I thought I was, I, I was hoping that I, I would have just been able to paint the little guy. Um, but this, this just screams doing your homework the night before, doesn't it? I'm staying out of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, look, I'm uh, doing mine the night after. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, I, I just, I, I, I think I knew I had a limited time frame, and uh, I had already planned out the scheme and everything way in advance because I, I, I just thought about the colors I wanted to use. Um, like the base came from watching aliens. Like there's quite a few little different bits and bobs that I threw into it. Um, but I, I think one of the things just to touch on to topic is, is that like to, to, to really execute something as well as you can in a short time frame. I, I always say that the planning is the ultimately the most important thing. So like choosing your colors, deciding on what you're going to be doing, how your colors are going to complement all that kind of stuff, making those decisions and then working out the best way to get those colors onto the miniature as quick as possible. So uh, if I was brush painting this, I probably would, would have actually like glazed a lot of the flesh. It's got the, the main color is obviously flesh. So like, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Can I just unpack that a little bit with the yeah. planning? So because you knew you had a limited amount of time, mm -hmm. how did that change how you planned for it? Because for example, if you was planning something for a golden demon piece that you knew was going to do in six months, mm -hmm. I'd imagine that you would put a lot of extra stages that you in your plan yeah and you're gonna to have to strip some of those out so i'm actually interested as to what things did you sacrifice and shorten how did the list get shortened down or, well, due to the time frame or that the the dominant the main thing about him is uh, and little friend is is the flesh so rather than doing all the flesh by hand and glazing it or and blocking it in sketching glazing it softening it smoothing it you know etc all of that i just i just sketched on all the flesh with an airbrush literally just sketched it all on so i literally under, it was undercoated correctly for a second time then then basically um then basically uh use an airbrush to just sketch all the volumetric muscular structure of the of the abominant on there um and then done a couple of stages of airbrush highlighting with, with on the flesh to soften it. Then I've done an overall glaze with the airbrush, almost like a, an airbrush glaze. So that you have to just thin down 
thin down the mid-tone uh, to literally just soften it all, um, which saved me loads of time from not glazing with, with a brush and doing all of that. Um, and then went straight on to just blocking in colors in the normal way that I do by majority color work in descending order. So that, that's basically what I've done. Um, but it, I flew through the blocking in because obviously the biggest thing was the, was the mus muscles and the flesh. So I literally flew through the blocking in. Um, and then I got to a point where everything was blocked in. I was watching aliens at the time and I was like, oh, I don't know what to do for a base. So then I was like, I'm not really sure what color to choose. I was thinking about different things. I was going to go all metal. I was going to go like, uh, and then I saw that I, I whacked up the contrast on, on, on the TV just to look at aliens because it was really dark. And I just, I noticed that it's got a greenish hue, all the gantries and stuff that are on there. I was like, right, I'm doing green because there's purple accents. So I wanted all the chitin or chitin, whatever it's called. I wanted that oh, purple. Doing that again, are we? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure what it's called. Someone will correct me in the comments. But you're the you're the only person that has a problem. Yeah, I never hear I, anyone talking about this. I've heard people say. Also, I just say armor. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've I've heard the bony crests. Then let's call it that. Okay. Yeah, I literally I I, I wanted that purple based on the color scheme because um, there was what it all started when I saw <laughs> it all started when I've I, never even heard that word before. Chitin or chitin or I don't know so which I way. Can't advise. I, I, I don't, I can't, know, I don't, I don't know, know which way correct. it's pronounced. I don't but know you what's can, correct because I, I'd never heard that word until we had this on the the original Tyranids episode, where it got like the fourth time in, and you were saying it every time. I, I, like, just, I just don't know I how don't to. Know what, I, don't I want know. to say the right thing, but I, I don't know. The it's gotten to the point where I actually think it's called chitin or chitin, whatever it's called. That's that's what it's actually called. That's got to be a t-shirt, surely. Yeah. No. Um. But but I actually I, there's a, there's I'll put it up now. But there's a there's a there's a Tyranid High Fleet that I saw uh, a reference image of, and that was where I initially got the color scheme from. So like the the, the blue black flesh uh, with the purple uh, uh, bony crest. So I <laughs> um, uh, and and then uh, and then I was like, right, well, I was watching Aliens, whack the contrast up on the TV, and I was like, well, it's got a bit of a greenish shield, all the gantries and tread plate and floor plate, etc. And there's like chevrons and stuff on it. I was like, right, that's my base purely because. Green obviously being a complementary color of red and purple being a harmonious color of red, it means that the purple and green will work really well together. So I was like, right, I'm doing that. And then the beauty of it is because yellow is a complementary color of purple, I can do the chevrons on the base that then complement the purple on the model. So I, I kind of all lined up really Classic well. Classic time-saving decisions, that. Yeah. Speed painting hack. Which <laughs> is it's just purely choosing colors that work together that gives you give you high contrast and, and have a really good relationship on the miniature. You've got um, the orange complement in the blue this, as well. This, so this, it's this all over. It. It's like a color theory uh, masterpiece. Well, this, this, is, this, uh, is, this is where it got really fun because of the blue tones in the flesh. I The, the hammer was the last thing I painted pretty much because I, I was looking at it and this is where I noticed... Um, I noticed... I looked at plasma guns and obviously the coils on plasma guns, when their plasma is not turned on or not being used, the coils are like a copper color. So when I looked at the box, box art or the, the little flyer on the front of the blister pack when I was painting at home, I noticed that the hammer had copper coils in the hammer. So I was like, wouldn't it be cool to make it like a, I don't know if there's a thing, like a plasma hammer, okay? So a plasma... Plasmama. 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 Yeah. Plasmama. Yeah, Plasmama, yeah. What's that Homer Simpson clip? What is he saying? <laughs> I don't know. Tram Trambampoli. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, one of those, yeah. So obviously looking at the coils, I was like, right, well, they're not glowing on the box art, but I think it'd be quite a cool way of adding some interest to the hammer because it's just a big steel object. I was like, right, well, I, I want to... And if you look at the hammer, sorry to get into the law side of it, it's actually got an, en a ge um, an energy generator at the bottom of the head, plus also a power cable into the head. So I was like, right, well... Sorry sorry to interrupt, right? The reason I had a bit of a joke about this a minute ago, it is insanely impressive to me that on a speed painting model, you're thinking this in depth about, like, he's got all the color theory stuff. He's looking at... He's thinking about law... Well, Parts the, of the, the generator thing he just mentioned that has a cable going from the thing to the head. He's painted fully chevron. Yeah. So there's your speed. Yeah, but, no, <laughs> that's that's speed but, yeah but that was done. That was done when I done. So I'll talk about that. So like little details and things like that. I painted at the same time as anything else on the model. So for example, the the chevrons that are on the floor plate. When I painted those. I painted anything yellow on the model. So like he's got the, on the shoulders, you've got the little boils and, and like spots and pustules and things on the skin. So anything that's yellow was all painted when I was using the yellow. The eyes as well, the eyes. Yeah, the eyes, yellow. all that kind of stuff. That, I've done... that all makes sense to me. I just find it very interesting. Again And again, impressive that even in the planning stage, you're thinking about, like you're thinking about it thought, in that way. Yeah. Like you're approaching it in the sense of like, oh, okay, well, all these colors will work together. But I suppose, I suppose the argument is what, what James is saying is if you do that, as the plan, 
Mm. You will save time painting. It does. You, know but you, wouldn't, you wouldn't think that on a surface level that, okay, if I'm going to speed paint, you'd, you'd think like, okay, we've got to go loads of neutral colors. I've got to like strip back all the detail. But you've kind of done the opposite. Yeah, yeah. I, I literally, well, the thing it's is- a very, you... It's a very good example of how effective you can be with the miniature and how good it can look in a limited amount of time. I, I, I always say this, honestly, like I, like color theory is a massively in-depth thing and you can you can spend ages like looking into it and getting like making decisions, all this kind of stuff and learning different relationships, et cetera. But like as a bare basic minimum competency, I'd advise anybody to have uh, an understanding of contrasting um, or complementary, same thing, and harmonious. Those two things will make your choices when it comes to being a miniature painter so much more informed. It's literally like, it, it just helps you. And I know what you're saying about using desaturated colors or maybe new, not using a more limited palette, et cetera. You don't necessarily need to. You, you can literally just pick colors that have high contrast value or value contrast, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it will just make the model look more impressive because the colors work with that relationship. That's basically what I'm saying. Like, it, like the, it's only got, so across all the skin, across all the, 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 the base, like it's got, a uh, chunky highlight, thin highlight, and a dot on the base. And then the, the skin has only got chunk. It's got three stages, chunky, thin, and a, and a, and a dot. Um, there's about two or three colors on the weathering on the leather. So I haven't really gone like crazy, crazy with like loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of highlight stages. But it's just, again, decent jumps in color for each of the highlight stages. And then at the same time, just being, just sticking to that plan of color theory. I think it just helps massively. Um, but yeah, the, the hammer was just a last minute thing purely because I was like, right, I want it to glow. I want to add some interest to it. It's got a power cable. I've chevroned it at the same time doing the the, the, the base and doing the little one on the base as well, like the number for the gantry or whatever. Like, I'm just going to do it orange. And the reason I picked orange purely was because the hammer's there. It's next to the chip, next to the arm. The arm's got a bluish hue near the top of the muscle on the top of the shoulder. So there's more vibrant blue there. And that that color contrast between the orange and the blue just, just really makes the hammer stand out and be more defined and at the same time it just makes the blue look more blue and just works really well with the blue as well so it, it honestly like when you when you have that that plan and think of those colors before executing it it makes the execution 10 times easier because you're literally all of it's mapped out you don't need to go oh what color am i going to do like there's none of that at all whatsoever it's literally like you know bear in mind i'm, I'm not one and this is the other thing i would say i'm not one for really watching tv and stuff like that while i paint I had Aliens on, which is a big distraction for me because I love that film. Um, and um, and look what it gave you. And it and, and it, look uh, it what actually, it gave it, you. It made it made the decision for the base for me literally because I was so, like, oh, like, the scene was really dark on my TV. There you and go. I so watch films while you paint. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah I, I, I I still don't personally recommend it. I but, actually but, I had a little experiment with this when I was when I was in college and at university. I was trying to work out what stuff made me most. Pro I had like a real productivity fad where I was like really into that. Mm. And I was trying to work out what made me most productive because some people like having TV and stuff in the background because it helps like calm them. Mm. And then some people are like, oh, I can't do that. I've got to work in silence, which I hate. Mm. And then some people like music or, you know, audio books, other different stuff. And uh, for me, I, annoyingly, I know what mine is and that's music, mm. but I still find myself doing other things because I know it's like a bit more entertaining. So I'll find myself often putting TV shows on and stuff. Yeah. But the difference it makes is like, really annoying because I know it works. Like I, I actually advocate everyone like experiment and work out what stuff does make you more productive in the background if you don't like working in silence because I've found that, you know, like that joke of like when you're playing like Xbox games and then like you sit forward and you don't think when you lean forward, yeah. you've got to start taking it seriously. It's like for me with a project, when I've got to start taking things seriously because time's getting on, it's like, right, turn Netflix off, <laughs> get a death core <laughs> full volume. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I like I I what I listened to. So most of Saturday, I started to most of Saturday, I listened to an audio book. So I listened to um, Soldering for Omnibus by Ben Counter. It's one of my favorite favorite books about a marine chapter. So I listened to that uh, for most of Saturday, and then yeah, on Sunday, I was like, oh, the model's well underway, and I was like, I've got to do the base, and I was like, I, I just had a quick break, took the TV on quickly just to check check the news or something, and then I saw the aliens, and so I was like, right, I'm going to put that on and watch that, and just something to switch my attention a little bit. Um, because I was I, I was probably about eight or nine chapters into the book, and I was like, I can't, I don't really want to listen to any more at the minute. But um, but yeah, so uh, it, what, it, it, sorry, what what sort of background stuff do you do, Joe, when you're painting? I mix and match a little bit. So my <laughs> I like I I think one of the earliest things I said on here was I like to put on like just trash TV, mm. like reality TV or something. Like something completely like mindless <laughs> that it can just go on in the background and I'm not watching anything. 
I'm just listening. How, how trash are we going? Like Love Island, Geordie Shaw? Well, it would have been Love Island a while ago. Love Island's fallen off though. Even Ex- as like an ironic, <laughs> even, even as like an ironic, like funny reality TV watch, it's just completely fallen off, unfortunately. Ex- There's a couple beach. of seasons. There you There's, go. That sort of thing. I mean, yeah. that's toxic as hell. But I've, done <laughs> I've, I've, I've done that. Uh, I've done a season or two of that before back in the day. So like, I do like, and Netflix has loads of them, mate. They're just unlimited they're, they're, they're supply. So, they're so like cheap to make, aren't they? And they're all <laughs> rubbish. Um, all you need is a patio and a fire pit, yeah. and like fifteen people in their twenties, and something will happen. Yeah, <laughs> it was funny. I remember once I was like during lockdown and everything, I was playing uh, FIFA online with a couple of my friends, and uh, one of their girlfriends was watching um, Keeping Up with the Kardashians in the background, and you could hear it through his mic, and I was just like. I'm in my element. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was complaining. I was like, I'm so relaxed. I could just hear rubbish TV in the background. I had the best night of gaming of my life. Um, yes, but not so much anymore. I, I kind of... Um, if you was like, oh, I've really got to knuckle down and concentrate and get this done, what are you putting Just some chill on? music. Just yeah. some chill music. Yeah, like some... Uh, it, well, actually, yeah, either something really chill. I, I don't go full instrumental a lot of the time. I know a lot of people need to... Need instrumental in order to focus because they get stuck on the uh, vocals a lot and then if you start thinking about oh listening to what people are saying it throws you off or whatever but yeah just something really chill ambient type stuff even with some vocals or similar to what you were alluding to I go like still kind of ethereal and and, and spacey but like heavy yeah um, so well, you I- get a lot of like there's a there's a some cross section somewhere between shoegaze and black metal. That is like, <laughs> I find that the heavier the music and the faster the music, the faster I paint. Ultimately, like yeah. it, it gets me more like amplified, like and it'd be like pumped up. If it's just some like chill, spacey dance, chill pop, I'm not. It's not. not feeling no, it. I'm not thinking dancey. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm not thinking dancey. I'm just thinking a bit dreamy. Either if it's chill or if it's heavy. Um, uh, yeah, I think it reminds me of, um, you ever seen The Big Short? Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. Christian Bale's character is like the genius one who's working out all the calculations and he's just shut in his room with like Megadeth or something yeah. playing. Um, like on his headphones. Yeah, it reminds me of that. But yeah, even like at work, even like it's not just um, not just painting. Yeah, I find like, it crosses over to kind of anything productive yeah. I've got to do. Yeah. yeah. Even like the housework. And oh, stuff. If just I know I've got like, I, yeah, I don't really understand it. And a lot of people would probably listen to some of the heavier stuff that I'm talking about and be like, how the hell can you focus when you're listening to that? But um, for some reason, if I really need to knuckle down on something, if I just put like Death Heaven on or something, I'll tell you just what. Like, I, I just get in. I, I, it's like it shuts out everything else and I'm just in. If that makes sense. You're saying DIY or housework, you know, death metal hoovering, you get it done in five minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you'll be around the house quicker than you can, yeah. you can do a brie. Um, but, um, but yeah, I did actually set myself a challenge on this as well. So I set myself a challenge of no red on the model as well. So as okay. well as, as well as like. Is that as a like ex- excluding a color from the palette to see what happens? Or is that because James Otero paints so much red he paint. needs yeah. to surely stop? I banned myself from red on the model. Okay. So, so yeah. But so just because you paint red a lot or just as an experiment or. A uh, bit of both. I paint red all the time and I just, it's my go-to muscle memory reflex color for greens or for, for like when I use purple. I was going to say, I like feel like, like if you hadn't done that, those yellow bits would probably be like a reddy pinky. Potentially, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, it's my go-to. That. So I literally just like, right, not doing it. The, the closest that I got to it was like the weird bone skull sack thing on the left hand side of the model and yeah. it had like a magenta kind of Disqualified. Like, but, but no, it's not red. <laughs> It's not red. It's uh, it's, it's like earth a, it, tones. It's, <laughs> it's, it's like a purpley, purpley pink. But that was just yeah. But that was the closest thing. But yeah, I think it doing something like that, like banning yourself. I know it sounds really silly, but like restricting yourself as well, it creates a challenge, which then makes you think and enjoy the piece a bit more, which is something else that I, I kind of enjoyed. We frequently hear from you with questions asking how you can paint like our team of world class and award winning artists. Teaching is something that all of the team here at Siege are very passionate about, and we want to share with you the methods and techniques that we use to paint every single day, all of the incredible miniatures and armies that you have seen from us. With the Seed Studios Patreon, you'll gain access to a growing catalogue of over 300 step-by-step tutorials covering a huge variety of colour schemes, miniatures, painting styles and techniques, 
from beginner-focused foundation tutorials to full character masterclasses. Each lesson comes in a beautifully designed and easy to follow PDF format with accompanying artist commentary with new tutorials added every single week. Your subscription also includes access to our private patron channels on Discord so that you can interact directly with our artists asking for questions or feedback. You'll also be supporting the podcast directly, helping us to bring you these episodes every single week. So if you want to take your painting to the next level and make the most of your very valuable hobby time, head over to patreon.com forward slash siege studios to circle onto the speed paint and stuff then what are some of the shortcuts that you took that if you were painting to a higher level you would have spent more time on uh so my highlight stages on when i do when i paint spend more time to paint to a higher level i'll do more incremental jumps in highlight stage so i won't go so so huge with like the next jump or the next jump or the next in jump in terms of like the brightness of the next color Correct. you pick yeah yeah, yeah. You'll so, go a bit more subtle so with then. this i literally done I only done three stages, so chunky, thin, dot. Each of those jumps was considerable so that so that you get more contrast on the miniature quicker, if that makes sense. Uh, so that's something I definitely would recommend. A lot of, and it's something I see on class all the time, a lot of painters are quite worried about boosting contrast or like jumping color, like from, from or jumping saturation of tone within a branch of color. And I think that the more bold you are with that, you'll see the, the benefit of it and how it actually renders the model and how you can make stuff paint stuff quicker on the surface if that makes sense yeah that makes sense so that, that that was the key thing it's the plan being a bit bolder with color making bigger jumps when you do your highlight stages and ultimately i, I i've got to say this it does come back to that thing that i was going about which is the mindset of painting sharp smooth neat clean like yes i painted weathered leather but i was painting all those scratches as neat and as cleanly as i could paint those random scratches and they like every single brush stroke is important so you don't have to redo that brush stroke or reapply it or do it again so Having that mindset whilst trying to be limited on what you paint and also have your plan in place. Those are the three angles of like, attack that I had on the model, basically. Weathered leather. Well. Weathered for leather sounded band, good. I was going to say, yeah, yeah that's, that's one a, for the band name. That's a band name. <laughs> Weathered leather would be like a psych, like a like a psych rock, like a King Gizzard type, yeah, Australian psych rock type yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay. Weathered e leather. Weathered leather. EP coming 2025. Yeah. 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 When my blood angel was finished. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what about you? You done some GSC, didn't you as well? Yeah. So I saw the new Brood Brothers when they got dropped in the Kill Team box. Is it the most recent one? Yes. The one I think it was the most recent one. I don't even know. I can't even keep track. Know. They're out every five I minutes. I think it, it is seems. the most recent. It is the most yeah, recent yeah. one. Yeah. It's yeah. the one that came with the Votan, right? That's correct. Yeah. 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 So, so GW sent that to Siege, um, and I thought I'd have a have a pop at those because I saw I being being a newer Warhammer uh, member of the hobby, if you will. And also being a bit closed off with Space Marines, I'll be honest. I didn't know that Brood Brothers were really a thing. I know they're like quite an older kit. So when I saw that dropped on Warhammer Community, I was like, what the hell are these? These are really cool. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that there was already a thing and this was just mm -hmm. like an update. Um, and I fell in love with the aesthetic. I thought it was really cool. Um, and interestingly, I've had an itch to paint the Cadian Shock Troops anyway. And I actually have a couple you did, like, ready you to did go. Paint, yeah, you did paint one, didn't you, at one point? No, you I've, got, ready, I've got or? one like ready to go that I was yeah. definitely going to start and I was going to do as a little fun project. But this worked out quite well because it's like a the way the kill team boxes work now, it's like a hybrid of a kit that's already out and then they give you like an upgrade spray. Hmm. So this is effectively just the Cadian Shock Troops that I wanted to paint anyway. So it was a nice little two-in-one for me. So that's what I was going to ask. Is it literally the Cadian full kit yep. you could just build some Cadians and, and disregard the upgrade spray if you 100%. want to. 100% it's Cadian shock troops plus, plus an upgrade, upgrade spray. spray that's actually pretty cool it massively changes the models it's, it's a more right. old school way of how they used to do things mm -hmm. that they don't really do anymore it's actually like, here's this full kit <laughs> and you can just add stuff to it you'd be surprised how I don't mean this in a negative sense you'd be surprised how few components there are as well because it's not like all of their weapons are swapped out because mm. they've got a lot of the same Gear Mostly is the like heads anyway. and, yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty much just heads. There's a few arms. There's some nice uh, like weapon options and stuff, but it's like by and large, it's just head swaps. Mm, yeah, um, which worked really nicely. It works really nicely, you said. Yeah. yeah. So my process for this was there was one new thing I wanted to try, and that was since we had the basing episode with Paul, uh, I always really liked the base that you done for the Chaos Marine that you mentioned in that episode, um, which was like you said about scratch building, like using like styrene and bits. So I wanted to have a go at that because it looked quite fun. And I didn't really have a plan for that. I just sort of found random stuff in my basing drawer and just threw some bits on the model and just had a go at it, which was not the fastest way to go about things, but it was loads of fun. So that was a trade that I was kind of happy to make. I'd say that I probably spent 
I don't want to say like half as much time just doing the bases, but like there was a, a considerable amount of time painting or well, I'm building and painting the bases as compared to the models. Um, mainly because I, I guess it's kind of in my comfort zone, the rest of the models. Like it's nice to, the first thing I noticed was I've been painting a lot of Marines lately, obviously with the Blood Angel stuff. I forget, I forget how tiny like human scale models are yeah. in Warhammer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I finished building them. I was like, oh my God, yeah. I'm going to paint that. But it's funny how That's quickly- That's not what I said when we did the Eldar thing. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, these are the new like bigger Upscales, ones. Upscales, yeah. <laughs> and it's tiny. Yeah. It's funny as well how quickly you get used to it. Because I remember at first, when I first picked them up, they felt like really, really tiny. Mm. And the more hours you spend painting them, it kind of like becomes your new normal. And then I'm gonna, I know ultimately I'm going to end up going back to Marines after this and be like, oh, they're massive models. But uh, yeah, so I wanted to, in typical me fashion, I suppose, replicate the box art paint scheme. Um, where I decided to cut the corners was, I've heard a lot of people saying, because um, I've had a bit of a dig at like speed painting in the past, and a lot of people say, a cool way to do it is paint the models to like a standard where you are ready to play with them and they look finished. Like there's no unfinished bits on them, but you can still add paint. You can still add highlight stages. You could still add extra detail. So that's kind of how I approach these of like knowing I had a limited time frame. I wanted to get the models painted look to look nice and actually look finished. And it's not like oh, I've still got to do the leather, but like it's not like that. Um, everything's fully painted and fully highlighted, but it's only two stages of highlights and everything. And typically I'll do like four, maybe five. So I'm at a point with these where if I wanted to spend a couple of hours per model, I could add some extra stages onto them. But it's, it's interesting though, because it's you have to make that decision first, right? Because that, well, what, James, what, James so what James was saying was he, he, did diff he knew he was only going to do three stages and he was going to cap it there. Mm -hmm. So he needed to make sure that the, the third stage was as bright as what his normal fifth or sixth stage would be. Exactly. Yeah. And make the jumps bigger. Whereas what you've done, I assume, mm -hmm. is just do the first two that you would exactly. do when you were doing five. So it's not actually gone as bright as you would. Exactly. Um, so it's a different way of doing it, I guess. Yeah, 100%. And uh, even just in the way that you like execute those highlights. So like if we talk about the GW box art style, we say about how they have the chunky highlight and like a thin highlight and then corners and dots and glazing and whatnot. Um, so with that, I done my chunky and my thin highlight, leaving space for those subsequent stages. Whereas mm -hmm. if I was just going to do two highlights, like what you said, if I was just going to do two highlights and stop there, I would have probably done them on the same plane. And then I would have gone probably for brighter colors just for more contrast. Mm -hmm. um, but I think luckily it panned out quite well. I don't think they look like particularly flat. I think there's still quite a nice jump in no, brightness. They're good, no? No, they're really um, good. Yeah, it's a fun box art scheme. Um, kind of, I kind of regret a little bit the way I've done the leather, potentially. I think it's a little bit too yellow, perhaps. Not This is the difficulty with like newer GW releases, is not knowing the box art schemes. You kind of have to test your paint knowledge a little bit to what you think in your head. You're like, oh, that's probably this color. And then you put it on the model. And you're like, ah, it's definitely not that color. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it was fun. Uh, I think the sort of get out of jail free card for me with speed painting stuff is... I know that I'm comfortable doing edge highlighting reasonably quickly because I've spent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours doing it. So I know my brush skill is there. If I was someone who wasn't comfortable with doing that, I probably wouldn't have painted it in that style. I might've gone like more of the airbrush or more volumetric, like uh, glazing, wet blending, maybe even dry brushing. I would have like suited it around my painting style. Um, with these, I'm fairly comfortable doing that. So even though edge highlighting is a fairly time intensive task, just from repetition and just being a more experienced painter, I'm reasonably quick at doing it. So I wasn't too worried about that. Where I spent all of the extra effort on these models and where I always think it counts, no matter what army you're doing, what scheme you're doing, is painting the face as good as you would do it like ever. Yeah. Not, I mean, you can always go further, but like these heads that I painted on these models are pretty much the full way I would have done it anywhere up to sort of knocking on the door of competition. Like I, I really spend a lot of time on the faces because as humans, it's the one thing that you're looking to recognize in yeah. anything you look at. 100%. And these being, you know, humanoid heads, if you look at them and they look right, you kind of start to ignore the fact that, yeah, the bases are actually quite bland. There's only mostly black on there and a little bit of accent colors and the gray armor is quite desaturated and there's not loads of highlights on it. Because when you look at that model, especially them being a light skin tone, your eyes are already drawn to it because they're a lot lighter. Hmm. The first thing you look at when you look at those models is, oh, the fact you're like, oh, wow, that looks like recognizable as something 
you know, familiar to real life. Like I'm looking at the face and you're like, you look at the model and you're like, oh wow, that looks great because of the head. When you like kind of, if you cropped the model and you just looked at the rest of the body, it wouldn't be anything special in my opinion. No. Um, that would be my hack for sort of my approach to how I've done it. Mm. I, I think also as well, you've been quite good on your selection of hearts. There's a couple of balaclavas in there and rebreathers. So oh, they you know, might, they yeah, might yeah, be tactical yeah, choices. Yeah, you only to have say. to paint half the head. That's a great choice. Mm. Yeah, that's, just, that's, a, that's an inspired choice of doing that. That's good. There are things like that in the build stage though. It's like, so um, even with the ones that have the weapons, to get around having to do those as sub-assemblies, I picked poses that were more open with those weapons. So when I looked yeah. at that kit, or if you look at these as an example, like they're holding the weapons kind of away from their bodies. Yeah, yeah. So even though they are holding a weapon fully, I can glue it on there with confidence knowing that I'm still going to get brush access. Whereas some of the other poses, they were obscuring a lot of the model and you would have found quite difficult to get a brush in there. Yeah, mm. it's good you got two open poses, two closed poses. So yeah, exactly. Good, it's a good ratio as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Joe, what is... Uh, well... What's now, been your contribution you to this? You can't see it uh -huh. yet, but I'm Which sure... going off vibes. Yeah, this is... I'm just going to put it out there and then hopefully I finish it tonight. But... The, li the, the listeners will know based on whether or not there is images on screen now. <laughs> yeah, and uh, well, this is what I was going to say is I'm sure you'll take great joy if I haven't done <laughs> it in, uh, in putting that there. But the plan, the plan for me was... Uh, I think I mentioned I had the Acolyte hybrid sprue, which yes. is like five models. Yep. Um, so I just took the... How, sorry, how? what did you have them from? Why did so you have So James, when the, the Kellermall first came out, it was in a, a old Kill Team box, right? which was the Kellermall with five. Gotcha. Like, so you got the hand-me-downs, the leftovers. So he, James, I, I was playing Kill Team at that time and James bought that just for that model and he was like, do you want these? Correct. Like, yeah. It was and a then, commander box, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the a commander, commander box. box. And yeah, the commander yeah. was the release of the, the Kellermorph. Kellermorph yeah. um, is it a, Starm, a, I think it was called. I think so, yeah. And is, is a plastic, like a bluish grey colour? It's like a cream colour, which I'm going to get to in a second because I I hate <laughs> I, I hate the coloured plastic releases. Right. I don't know why if someone else who's more technically minded and into the production of models and stuff like that can tell me why these models are so different. Mm -hmm so much harder to clean. I don't know. But. So are you talking about when the plastic sprue is like dyed and it's colored, so it's not gray plastic? Yeah, but even to the point of like, these ones are different in terms of like, the sprue was like rounded. It was like, you know, like the- um, Oh, I do know what you mean. Yeah. You know, like the- The, ed the corners and the edges. The yeah, but you know, like the, the Warhammer Heroes that we did recently, yep. where how they come, it's like blue plastic yep. and it's like rounded. It's a, a bit, something's, something's off. Yeah, something's a bit different because it's not just um, it's not just the color change. The plastic does feel different as this well. This is what I'm it? saying. Yeah, yeah. and, I, and I, I I've built like I say all of the the um, underworlds war bands come like that, and I've built a lot of them. And do you think just to speculate? Do you think that's because because typically with GW it's the push fit stuff or the easy to build stuff that comes in that it's manner? So that you do you think it's because it's easier to clip? Do you think the plastic might be softer, so it's easier to clip off? Potentially, I don't know, but I'm I know, I know that it's but... like it's like obviously they they dye it so that you can just to encourage people to just build them and then still be able to play, tell play their, with them right away, yeah. tell their game pieces apart. But regardless, yeah, it was one of those. Um, I've I built the the leader boy. He's got he's half covered in robes, so that was a bit of me. Um, and I didn't really go in with like a proper plan to be honest. I knew I don't know if this is like an official um scheme or not, but I wanted to do like the the chitin or chitin or whatever you call it as like a dark green like <laughs> incubi drukari vibe okay um flesh tones for the for the with like a purple recess as, as the flesh and then obviously the the red robes um because similar to james i'm like a bit of a color theory um <laughs> genius and i thought <laughs> green goes with a red yeah, and then there's purple in the. I'm so glad we recesses. have you on the show, Joe, to drop these there's knowledge bombs. There's purple in the recesses of the flesh. Okay, so thank, thank you for the visual aid. Um, <laughs> so that is That's how deep. that is how it's going. Um, I'll tell you one one problem I had with it that I would like to get over because. The flesh that you two have done on show uh, doesn't really scratch the itch that I was trying to do. So I don't know if you're going to be able to help or not. But what itch is that? I, for some reason, wanted to do like any mix I came up with for, to do the flesh. I wanted something super pale 
but that didn't really look like human flesh though. Yeah. Any mix I came up with pretty much just looked like a very light tone of human flesh. <laughs> I couldn't get it to not like without literally painting it white mm -hmm. and putting like a contrast over it of like purple and then it would just look purple. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know how you see like on the box, like you see a lot, um, some what? of the like, there's purple tones in mine. So like the vampires and stuff like that. Yeah, but yours look, still right. looks more, because of what they are. Yeah. They're, they've obviously taken over like human. DNA. DNA. Yeah. yeah. It I, does look more like normal yeah. flesh, doesn't right. it? Right, okay. I've got, I've got yeah. But what I'm getting at is, you know when you see that they use like on the box art, maybe on the deepkin or something, and yeah. it's like, it looks like white, but it's not. It's got small tones on it and things like that. I was trying to mix like greys with a like more uh, red or purple type like, skin tone type paint, and all I was getting was just a really pale skin. Was it next? skin? Yeah, I was kind of trying to match that. That's what's on the box art, but I couldn't really work out. Even when like researching recipes and stuff, I couldn't really work out what to do. To be honest, so like like with that dead ultramarine on the crew base, I wanted like a dead, cold, bluish tinted flesh mm. tone. So I I mix like blue horror into flayed one flesh, and it okay. gave the flayed one, which is already like a very pale, pale skin like skin tone. It gave it a bluish hue, but you can do the exact same thing with like what's the really bright purple? Uh, it's like I can't pronounce it. It's like there's a really bright purple. Um, Dracalia lilac. Yeah, something like that. I was, gonna, yeah, like I was gonna that. say I think yeah. you should try and pronounce it. From memory, Tracalian. Oh, I don't know. This <laughs> <Is> it. <laughs> <laughs> I just tried to say what you would have said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know when you hear people um, when they go, like one yeah. person hears something, the next, <laughs> yeah. something the next person hears something, it ends up like a completely um, different word. The yeah. yeah. So it it was just like one of those things where I've, I haven't really had to tackle that before, and I've already base coated the flesh. So as you can see from the images, um, I've definitely probably got more of a a regular flesh tone than I would have wanted. See, my, my approach personally would have been to start with like a regular flesh tone and then add tints and yeah. shades onto that. Well, maybe I can do that. Then. Yeah. Maybe I can do that. I'm obviously, the plan was to, is to shade some purples in there. Yeah. Well, because um, of, oftentimes when you look at skin like that, it is actually just pale flesh colors, but in the shades and the volumes of the skin mm. is where all of the color lives, mm. typically. Not always, but... Yeah, yeah, but I, I see the thing is I, the reason I like putting a bit of the inherent color that I'm going to do any glazing or shading. So say for example the pin shading or the glaze. Like putting on those, that into the base. I coat. like putting that into the base coat. So then that the colors I put in the shadows or glaze they they no, look they, more they, they look more natural because that yeah. color's already got. A bit yeah, of that no, cute. that makes sense. So, Obviously, it, I guess it was a bit of a difficult request anyway because I wasn't going to be spending loads of time and glazing and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I yeah. was going to really like shade it, yeah. highlight it once or whatever. Yeah, but that makes sense. Um. But yeah, you can see the, the 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 aim is that you are currently looking at a model that's at very least fully base coated, shaded. Maybe there's a highlight or two on there. Okay. If it, if you're not, then again, I'm sure George will take great joy in writing something on the screen now. Well, the next the next episode you're on will then will then basically we'll have an update, and I think that's when we get to put the cherry on the cake. Yeah, you got it. you got to bring yeah. it next week. Yeah, once it's done, I'm yeah. finishing it tonight. I'm not doing anything else to it after tonight. It's whatever I get done tonight. I literally don't have the. T I'm still moving. I've been moving <laughs> flat for like three weeks. <laughs> I need to move. Uh, um, you can, you so, can load boxes and paint at the same time. Come yeah, on. yeah. So <laughs> lack of motivation, if you ask me. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So there we go. No, that was good. my contribution. Good, good. Fair. Yeah. Cool. On that note, then, should we go through some of the. Submissions from the community for hashtag June Steeler Colts. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, everyone, for submitting. This was probably the most popular month, actually, which surprised me. Well, to use a bit of a pun, it was a bit of an uprising. Yeah. So, uh, well, thank you, thank you for that. <laughs> I'm going to put I'm going to put them on screen now. Uh, scroll through some of these. Uh, are there any like favourites that you guys have picked out potentially? I mean, there's there is tons. There are loads. There is yeah, tons. Yeah, there's of quite a lot to go through. Yeah. I did like in particular. Um, the submission from Grim Darkness. What a <laughs> That's a great username. I only, I only picked this partly because of the username. The rest was for the model. Um, they, did, they did the Goliath Rock Grinder, which I think is just a cool model anyway. Yeah. I like yeah, a cool sick. vehicle. Um, but the thing I liked about this is that it's... I 
I've, we spoke about this when we spoke about Marines before, is where like, ideally, I think these kind of more realistic color schemes of like really dark, dreary colors should be the best ones because that's it feels more realistic and that's what things would be like. But it's hard to make them look good and not boring on big models or armies and things like that. But this one being like super clean, it's still, it's almost all the, like it's quite realistic in terms of like, it's almost all one color. Um, and then there's just little spot colors on like the riders and the the little lenses and lights and stuff are kind of glowing um, to bring some attention to it. It's little bits of freehand and stuff, some chevs, um, <laughs> some chevs. But again, even like not putting the yellow on, it's just literally like black chevrons on the already dark um, kind of base color for the thing. I think it looks really cool, really ominous. James? I went with probably the most, ep well, most recognizable model. It starts, a Gene Steeler cult starts with the vision of bringing the high fleet to the planet. And that all starts with a Gene Steeler infiltrating the population. And I went with Cobitron's Gene Steeler, probably the most aggressively posed Gene Steeler I think I've seen in a long time. Um, really great paint job, great sort of like more pastel -y kind of tones. I loved the pink uh, accent on the end of the, the, the scything talons or the talons that it's got or the claws should i say um and the desaturated dark carapace the high contrast value between the between the skin and the, the carapace um or the the chitin or chitin or whatever you want to call it um <laughs> but uh but i i uh, i i genuinely genuinely liked it i like the leaping pose the way it's grabbing onto the pipe work the fact that there's some rust effects and sort of like weathering on the on the pipe as well i thought that was quite good um and then really good use of color on the base so you've got like a, a orangey kind of pink kind of hue on the base that kind of works really nicely with the pastel sort of uh, purple tones that are on the, the flesh so overall really good and then using yellow on the eyes as well just to denote those and really give contrast on those as well i thought was brilliant so yeah overall really really uh awesome and I, I, the one thing i've not seen anyone do before is like the the weird fleshy part in between all the joints rather than that being like a super dark color it's also pink as well to match the talons as well so just just overall really cool really cool piece nice my pick is from spaced crusader who is easily the best rule bender of the bunch <laughs> which is the spirit we all love to see in these monthly challenges we do normally love yeah some rule love bending. a rule bending uh this is an uh, this is an ayandan uh what model was that wraith lord wraith lord uh but if you look closely on the base, there's a little Gene Steeler skull. <laughs> that's, so uh, that's, that's nice way to shoehorn the challenge into your army that you're already painting. Well done. Yeah. It's nearly a real snap, but that will, yeah. that will, Well, that that's up that. there. That's definitely up there with the Admech cog that the we had uh, <laughs> yeah. the other month. <laughs> I don't think there's going to be a rule bend better than the Admech cog. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, it's no, Adeptus no. Mechanicus, so naturally I painted a Dreadnought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if you want to submit in this month's painting challenge, which is hashtag Julegion for the month of July, uh, it's basically you can paint anything Horus Heresy inspired Space Marines, but maybe bend the rules, we'll see. Uh, hashtag is on screen for you now. If you could use that when you submit into the Siege Studios Discord, we have a channel in there just for these monthly challenges. Please check the description of this, uh, wherever you listen to this podcast, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that. It'll be in the show notes, link to our Discord, and you can engage with the community over there. And most importantly, submit your models for the monthly challenge. Uh, should we do a question of the week? Yes. It's been a while since we've had a regular question of the week. The three of us, yeah. ready to... Was it you say, Joe, you like to let your knowledge find them naturally through the episode? Which I think it has already, to be honest, this episode. I've obviously had a few weeks built up. <laughs> so, Okay, well, we're ready for your knowledge. Uh, Carl LM says, I'm based in London. When things start getting warmer, it can be a change that is more extreme than expected. And you notice you have to treat your paints a little differently. What's have been the best ways to deal with changes in the weather, especially when air conditioning is a seldom occurrence in the UK? Joe, how do you like to deal with painting in the heat? So here's the trick is I've actually said this before where uh, you need to plan your year's worth of projects ahead of time and then you prime everything for the year. So every prime everything for 2025 at the end of 2024. You're in winter then. And then you are good for the year. That's my recommendation. So basically you're saying sucks to suck, should have planned. We'll, we'll catch you next year. <laughs> yeah, that's it. If, and then if 
if you get a new model that you want to, it's actually a good tip to stop you buying new models. As well. We were talking about piles of potential area. If you get a new model and you're like, I want to paint that now. Yeah. It's a very good test in your patience because mm. you, you now know, okay, well, I, I'm not allowed to prime it until December. <laughs> So this is the sort of knowledge that people rely on naturally finding them throughout these episodes. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's good to have you back on the show. Again, this is this is what I say though. Like I do prefer it to find them naturally, and you're putting me on the spot with a direct question <laughs> like this. I don't like the organised segments of these questions and stuff. It kind of it throws off your seems vibe. Seems a bit forced. Yeah, James, have you me. got a real answer for us? Ice cubes in your wet palette and mini fridge can't what, go wrong. Right, what answer is more mental? <laughs> <laughs> what answer is more mental? Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Ice cubes in your wet palette. I didn't know he was going to come back with that, to be fair. I thought he'd have uh, like something quite normal. I don't know why I thought that, because this is James. But for some reason, in my deluded state there, I thought, well, thanks for that ridiculousness, Joe. Don't worry, James, you know, we'll give come, us something yeah. normal. Yeah. yeah. And then that happened. So here we are. Again, it's one of those what things. Was it? Sorry, then. Ice Sorry. cubes in your wet palette. Mini fridge, mini fridge restoring it overnight. Can't go wrong. Yeah. No, literally. Um, yeah. Ice cubes in your wet palette. So you put, so as soon as you notice, well, I use them all the time. If it's really hot, 35 plus, normally typically, I remember last year, our summer was crazy for England, but people in the States, like Texas or somewhere like that, probably going, oh, 40 degrees, you got nothing. But no, like, it, it was, that's Celsius. Yeah, yeah Celsius. Yeah, yeah. Celsius. Yeah, it was, <laughs> don't understand. Yeah, it, was pretty, it was pretty hot. Um, so, um, so yeah, so literally, you've got your wet palette. Hopefully it's a DIY one. And you literally just get your ice cubes, put them in the corners, four little ice cubes or four decent sized ice cubes. They is start, that, is that, they, so, is the idea here that it's keeping the water cold or so that they melt it and keeps, then keep your palate it keeps the up. It keeps the water cold so it reduces the temperature in the wet palate. Look at the cogs turning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Keeps the water... Keeps no, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm on board with this. I mean, keep, fact, no, go on. So go are you going to argue over. with science? You've got time. Win me over. So it's, I don't need to win you over. It's fact. The ice cubes melt. It reduces the temperature as your water is evaporating and the, and the water that you put in your palate is heating up to natural room temperature. You open the tap, you put it in the wet palate. It's colder because it's been in the pipes on the ground, not in direct sunlight. And then as you go deeper, it's colder. Yeah. Your water, your water is is warms up to room temperature in the palate, starts to evaporate. Okay. If it's 35, 40 degrees, that happens pretty quickly. You get some ice cubes. You put your ice cubes in it, they slowly melt, reducing the temperature in the wet palate and keeping the palate hydrated. What where what, right. what's, what's crazy? What's crazy with, with that? I can't I can't necessarily argue with that. However, I will say that I didn't think of it as a temperature issue. I always thought of it as a dryness issue. Which solves so both the, of them. That's, that's the it solves saying. both of them. Yeah, but I didn't think of it as being a temperature problem necessarily. I always think of it as like, oh, my palate's drying so, out. So what? When you, yeah, it, but what so, he's saying is it, it doesn't matter. Well, that makes sense. Take the temperature out of it. Yeah. Like the, the, that's still ticking a the box. The ice cubes yeah, yeah. are going to continually rehydrate the wet palate, aren't they? And, and if you use one of those rubberized ice cube things, you can make yourself a bevy as well. Right. See, I always know when there's an and. When there's an and <laughs> after the point. And I'm always nervous when there's an and after I've just agreed with him. Because I knew that another mental thing was coming. But Well, having a drink. <laughs> well, I'm <laughs> sharing sharing your ice creams between like one for your drink, two for your wet palate. One for the drink, two for the wet palate. Well, my personal tackle for this is going back to a previous episode where you made fun of me, Joe, where I said I like to treat my palate like a nice bonsai tree. Yeah. You do. Uh, so I you spritz it. I do. I'm a, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a palette mister. I've got a, a little a little spray bottle. Don't say that. Like that's a thing. That's, that's a thing. not a thing. I've that's got a little you. a little spray bottle. Ideally, actually, the ones for plants are great because they make a very very fine mist. If you just got like a normal spray bottle, like you know, it, it did have a cleaning product in it. You've recycled it once it's done. You put water in it. That's very very thick water beads. Right. You're chucking out none of that. Yeah. Right. When you got like one of the ones you used for, for spraying indoor plants, it's a very, very fine mist. Yeah. So just from above, I'll just let a little mist settle down. And then that's like soaking back into the paper, keeping things nice. And well, but it's like, you've got paint on it already. Yeah. But that's drying paint. So you know how like when you're on your wet palette, yeah. paint, even when you're using a wet palette, the paint will still start to dry out. Yeah, yeah. If you introduce water back into the mix, it so rehydrates it, okay. it, gets it going again. But you're doing a nice even layer from above. So you could do, you could do, Ice cubes and, and the mist and yeah. the mist. I think we should team up. I think no, we should megazord this. I'm, 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 I'm up for that. Yeah, as long as I can be green and ranger, in, that's fine. Do it in December anyway. Add me into it. Yeah, do it. Just do it. Just only paint in December. Just do it in December when it's yeah. nice yeah. and hot. Yeah. It's yeah. cold. No, I'm saying cold. Yeah. What? Well, you don't need the ice then. No, 
No, it was my answer, wasn't it? Right, to get okay. around the question. Your right. his answer was ice, your answer was mist, and mine was don't paint in the okay. summer. Right. And when you're hot, you can give yourself a little spritz as well. <laughs> yes, brilliant. There you go. See? Yeah. Multi use. Yeah. Multi use. And oh god. The plants in my house, my indoor plants, they're always fresh. They're not dying out on me. Yeah. 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 Just... Do you know what you can also do? You can get your misting bottle in your mini fridge to keep it really cold. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, Hobby Hacks is our weekly closing tradition on the podcast where we share a hobby hack that you can implement into your painting. This is your reward for listening to us waffle on for, what has it been, an hour and a bit uh, every single week. This is this is your reward at the end. And unfortunately, it's not going to be as good as last week because, Joe, you missed it, unfortunately. We had the best hobby hack of all time. Okay. So you're going to have to go back and listen to that episode, I'm afraid. Yeah. If you haven't caught it, go back and listen to last week's episode. James, what have you got for us this week? I've got you. So it's going to be really difficult to beat Ben's from last week because as you can tell by my Christmas morning childlike face pulling on the last episode, I was pretty impressed. By it, was good, it was a good one. It was a good one. It was good. a good one. I think I saw a comment about it. That was evolution. Okay, yeah. all right. Go but, back and listen to the whole yeah, So one of the biggest problems that a lot of people have with airbrushing is the sputtering, blocking, and tip dry. It's something which a lot of us struggle with when it comes to airbrushing. Now... You are going I to need. If you put an ice cube in, <laughs> <laughs> on the, the end hopper. of your airbrush yeah. <laughs> into the holder, into and the then holder. if you just sort of <laughs> spritz the front of it, yeah, yeah, I it's find not as, I never have that problem. Yeah, you never have the problem. So you are going to need to go to a charity shop or a, a, a shop where you can buy a piece, uh, like a, a bit of uh, like a, a, a saucer or like something from a teacup. Obviously, it's very British, but like something that you'd put under a teacup. Yeah, or like half that. half of these listeners are English. They've got they've yeah. got a saucer kicking around. So yeah. yeah, go and support your local charity shop, Macmillan or any of those places. Go buy the most crazy old school, you know, patterned bit of china that your nan would have. Like that would do the, the best thing possible and you don't have to spend as much. Um, but yeah, all jokes aside, you need you need to get yourself a uh, a little uh, sort of saucer that would go underneath a teacup or something. Now, a lot of those sort of saucers will have a recessed hole in the center, which is perfect. And that's what you want. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to get some of your favorite paper towel blitz, your snob paper, as I like to call it. Okay. Very snobby when it comes to paper towel, but yeah, blitz, you're going to get some of that and you're going to scrunch it into a teardrop shape. So you can have a ball on one end and you can have a tail with all the uh, bits that are like sticking up from that scrunch that you've made. So it'll look like you've got, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll even prepare you some blue Peter style images think, of what the, what the setup do, is. I think we should do a demonstration on an episode of this because it sounds pretty in depth. I, I, we, we can do a demo and I'll, I'll guarantee doing that, but I will put up a picture of what you need right there now. So it's there for you to have a look at. So you need to make a shape of paper towel like that and you've got your little saucer. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to get some airbrush thinner or cleaner, whichever you prefer. And you're going to fill that recessed hole with it. Okay. And then you're going to plonk the teardrop bit of paper towel in the center of the china dish. What's going to happen is the ball part of that paper towel is going to absorb a lot of that uh, moisture or liquid from the, from the china dish. Uh, the beauty of it being ceramic or china is it keeps its inherent temperature quite cool, which means that it won't evaporate as quickly because it's a cold thing that the paper towel with moisture on it is sitting within. What you're going to do is with your airbrush, I see a lot of people using the airbrush with like the needle guard on the end of the airbrush. And the problem with that is that you can't actually see the needle because it's got this guard over it to stop you from cutting yourself or damaging the needle, etc. Now, most needles in airbrushes are quite strong. They're not, unless you're getting it and jabbing it into a hard surface, you're not going to bend the needle. If you drop it from a great height and it hits on the needle, it probably will bend. But general knocking... I have bent the yeah. needle doing this, by the Gen way. I will just put it out yeah. there. Like, that has happened. You, you will do. But as long as you're using a holder or you've gotten something that the really, really substantial that holds the airbrush in place, you're not going to drop it. Um, I would recommend you use your airbrush without the needle guard on so you can see the needle. And the reason for that is because what happens is as air is being atomized through the end of the airbrush, that, that hole where the needle sticks out of the front of the airbrush that it moves backwards and forwards from, paint will accumulate around that. So if you're from the other side of the pond and you've only ever driven an automatic and you're not driven a stick shift, this is where understanding about the, the, the clutch on a, on a car is really important, or for example, your mirror check. And we, this technique is called the mirror check. This hobby hack is called the mirror check. I don't is. know where we're going. So, we've, so far, we've it's coming. Some it's, China. it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> this is like what, uh, this is the step one. Get all of, It's like one of those five minute crafts. Yeah, yeah. So I step right. My sink is broken. Get your ramen. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's coming. Yeah, right. Okay. So, so 
you, you, you've got your paper towel scrunched up in a teardrop in the china dish with some airbrush cleaner or thinner in it. You've got your airbrush with that needle guard on. Okay. So what that means is visually you can see that needle all the time and you can instantly see when paint is starting to accumulate at that point where the needle comes out the front of the airbrush. All right. Tip dry is caused by paint drying around that hole. Okay. And what it does is it causes sputtering. It causes paints to catch on there and fleck off and create like all those little marks on their thing. This is called the mirror check. So while we're driving, you're supposed to, if you're driving correct to teaching, you're supposed to, you're supposed to check the, the mirror every 10 seconds to check cars behind you, aren't you? Every 10 seconds? Yeah. You're taught to teach. Is that, you're, is that official? Yeah. Official you're taught to look at the, in your rear view mirror very regularly to check obviously cars behind you. Well, this is technique and this hobby hack is called the mirror check. So while you're working using the airbrush, you're going to be airbrushing your model. And your eye is going to be obviously focused on the miniature as you're airbrushing it. But every couple of 10, 15 seconds, you're going to just flick your eyes and have a look. And it becomes muscle memory through doing it. You're going to look at the front of the airbrush. And the moment that you see paint accumulating on the end of that airbrush, you're going to get that paper towel. And with the wet part that's a ball, you're going to wipe that to take off any paint that's accumulated around the needle. You're going to flip that paper towel around in your hand. And the tail, which is dry, you will then dry off the end of any excess cleaner or thinner that you put onto that airbrush. Does that make sense? Then right, you put, yeah. then you place it back down on the china dish, the paper towel. Just in doing that, you will maintain your airbrush working for longer. You'll mitigate tip dry massively. Okay. And you will see a massive improvement in your performance of your airbrush because that is the point of the airbrush that causes problems that accumulates paint. So the hobby hack, the mirror check, as we're going to call it, okay, is where you're diagnosing and fault finding the airbrush as you're working every 10, 15 seconds, you're looking at the front of that airbrush to make sure that you're not getting a potential blockage or potentially creating sputtering from paint drying and accumulating on the end of the, on the end of the, um, on the end of the airbrush. And if it's summer, you can put some ice cubes. If it's summer, <laughs> at least you've done it before. I agree with him this time. And you can also put some ice cubes in your china dish. Okay. So that as they melt, they increase the moisture on the on your mirror check paper towel. And that's the hobby hack. I mean, I hate it when he goes off on something absolutely insane and then he always pulls it, it back again. It just makes sense. It makes sense. It's fine. Like it, it completely makes sense. Somewhere in the middle of that explanation, I was like, what? There was, there was a China dish. We, what we happened were, to that? We, we were going down a charity <laughs> shop. Then we were learning how to drive manual. Yeah. I mean, a little dig at the Americans. I, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The American mind cannot comprehend <laughs> the clutch. <laughs> the clutch. <laughs> but that 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 what, what what was the what was the point in the clutch? Well, because it, it, basically it's like a, it's something you do in the process. So like you, you need. Oh, to, so you were yeah. saying like muscle memory, muscle like, memory. Yeah. So basically, okay. that mirror check, like checking Sorry. the mirror, like changing gear, it's that clutch biting point, etc. I thought the clutch all, was going to be something to do with like pulling yeah, the needle yeah. back. No, yeah. no. At certain well, it's very, it's very like using an airbrush is very much like driving a manual. It's got a biting point where air and air and paint yeah. come out at the same time. But yeah. uh, what I'm trying to get at is with the clutch or with the mirror. I call it the mirror check. It's literally checking the front of the airbrush for drying paint around it because the needle guard isn't on there. The only thing I would say, just as a caveat to be careful, is if you have got a holder that your airbrush is in, I'm left-handed, so my airbrush is always on my left. Um, if it's not got the needle on and you, you store your paints and like things on your left, which is typically happens. You could jab yourself. You could jab yourself or cut yourself or stuff like that. I would say for but, safety reasons, the airbrush cap is on there for a reason, a safety reason. Um, so if you are going to take the airbrush cap off, please be careful. Um, and we are not liable for any uh, <laughs> any injuries that may occur. And as I say, I have done it and I've bent my I've bent a airbrush couple. needle. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it is what it is. Maybe I would still. I think the issue was I, I took it off and just got like didn't never put it back on. Yeah. yeah. Maybe if you're going to store your airbrush, just put it back on mm. or something. Yeah. yeah, that was a journey. That hobby hack wasn't it? We went uh, yeah. went all sorts of places. I'll get some. I'll get some slides to make the journey easier. Yeah. Okay. Well, on that delightful note, thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Pain Perspective. If you'd like to support the show, check the description of this episode. There is links to our Patreon. If you'd like to become a member over there, you'll gain access to a whole load of amazing benefits, including all of our tutorials, PDFs. And also there is the Siege Studios newsletter. So if you'd like to try out one of those PDFs for free, subscribe to the newsletter and you'll gain access to that as well. We look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you very much. See you next time. <laughs>